right, Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about relationships. Now, of course, keeping our marriages strong and intact is absolutely important. That's right. But, Siji, you know, everything sort of begins to age. There's wear and tear mm -hmm. to everything in life. Mm -hmm. um, but wear and tear, you know, there's a way you can sort of polish it up and you maintain it, right? That's right. The issue is now when there's a crack. Mm -hmm. And often these cracks are very unseen. Mm -hmm. Until sikumoja umeinua tu kikombe imeja chai ya mauji, alafu pangala, yote meanguka. You're right. Because of a crack that maybe you didn't spot somewhere. And I guess many of our relationships actually are the same way. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, what cause causes these cracks? Especially because they're so unseen. So perhaps we think it's not something deliberate. There could be those that are deliberate, like you've been rough with how you handle it. But maybe there are other things that just slowly begin to eat away at the foundations of our relationship and then cracks begin to form. And I'm happy you differentiate that so that we help our viewers differentiate between friction. When people are moving together, there'll be friction. Mm -hmm. There'll be small tensions. There'll be the ordinary differences. They are painful, but they are of the daily variety. Mm -hmm. And they never, br if we solve them, if we handle them, they are more like the pimple on your face mm -hmm. or some flu that you got treated and you went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you disagreed of some things, you sorted them and you moved on. And we say they are important. Yeah. Because they, they bring depth to your relationship. They help each other understand each other more. Okay. I know what he likes. I know what she doesn't like. I know this one. Is, no, 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 no. It helps actually enhance the relationship. The problem with the cracks. Cracks touch on the foundation. Cracks is when you begin to have a sustained difference about something. Mm -hmm. Sustained. Okay. A good example is where to invest. If you disagree on what is the priority for the family now. And you begin to, this person thinks you should go this way, especially if one of you is a spender, the other one is a saver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and one of you is an achiever, the other one is a settler. Uh oh. <laughs> if one of you, achievers are restless, they don't stay on jobs too long just because they're being paid well. Yeah. They, 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 they want, they can quit jobs just because they're no longer being challenged. But a settler will get very offended. How can you quit a job that is well paying? But what happened to opposites attract? You see, we started, we, ah, thank you for that. When people come together and they are very different, they are excited by how different they are. Yeah. But we said when op opposites attract, then attack. You must be very careful. Okay. If you are two opposite, you must work towards aligning. When you came together as a couple, you came one this direction, then you met. After you meet, there's a tendency to settle. We settled down last year. <laughs> if you settle, other things will find you. In this life, there's no room to rest. After mm -hmm. you come together, you like must that. now start moving in the same direction. I like what you've said. In this life, there's no room to rest. No. And actually tell all of you who, you know, your whole life goal is just to get a husband or a wife. That, that if that is your only goal, you will frustrate your spouse. Can we you announce that? Frustrate because that relationship. Very good. This this is a perception that I would tell that if you date and marry, you have succeeded. Tick, mm -hmm, tick, tick. Mm -hmm. Marriage is not the end. Yeah. It's only the beginning yeah. for another chapter in life. In life is like climbing a mountain. When you reach at the top, you see others. <laughs> another another yeah. height of you. So after you come together, you must agree the direction to move. If one of you is trying to build an empire, another one is satisfied in a village, <laughs> there will be a difference. <laughs> well, <hello. laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So and and, and the, the problem is this. Cracks come when you are sus when you begin to move in a different direction from each other and you find that you're no longer, for example, one sign is that when news happen at the end of the day, that's not the person you think of telling because you have been looking, applying for new jobs and they don't think you should change jobs. Hmm. When you've been called for an interview, you hide or you don't say it oh. because you're trying to change and they think you should not change. Or uh, them, themselves they want to go into business, you want to go in, more into corporate and the business is up country, you're trying to go, fly to Ethiopia. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know so oh, those no. are their crack it's like when ships are leaving mm. harbor and one is going 45 degrees no the other one 46 degrees mm, it makes a big it, difference it's only one degree so in the beginning it doesn't look like a big difference but over time yeah so the outward out you need to identify a crack if there's a sustained difference over the same issue okay you will never be the same all of you together but you need to agree on the general direction of life okay another sustained difference will come to children Mm -hmm. If one believes a child should go this direction, another should go that direction, and th you keep uh, advising them to go opposite of what the other one is doing. Mm. So you know mm -hmm. it's a crack if you are, you are not able to see eye to eye. And I want to tell people that one of the ways to maintain a marriage going, even when they are to, to override cracks, is to begin by setting values even before you get married. Okay. Value projects and progress. Projects 
and progress. Okay. One of my brothers in law told me that he and he and his wife cannot stay without a project because they realize when they have a project they're trying to achieve something to purchase a property, that stretch keeps them connected. Mm. Never allow your marriage to live idle. When you live without cultivating anything in your garden, weeds will grow there. Wow. After you finish that loan, start another one. For the purpose of fighting together. In the, world, in the World War II, the guys who fought together, even today they are still friends, whichever country they came from. Mm, mm. When, in in you know, neuropsychology, you see neurons that wire toge fire together, wire together. You need to fire together the same challenge. To fire together. In fact, you need to start projects. A bigger car, a better plot, a better house for no other reason than we can't stay like that. <laughs> for, that should be enough reason to undertake a project. Wow. Never allow idleness to come. Where will the money go? Where will the energy go? So as you meet challenges, and sometimes you need to fail together and laugh at each other. And it's so true because, you see, when people talk about friendship in relationships, it is going back to those, pro it's, it's really projects. Maybe we've just never used the word project. Yes. <clears throat> but it's really going back to things that they struggled with together, things that moments and experiences that they shared together. That's what really forms your friendship. And that's when you're 50 and you're 60, you're laughing about those things. You have memories to lean back on. And you on. prove to the world that your team can work, you know? It is so pleasant when, and, 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 and I tell guys that if there's something that is important for your wife is when she's expecting a child, there's a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. I ask, I, I encourage guys to be very present because those memories are lifelong. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when we went to the hospital? Do you remember this how it used to be? Do you remember? Those are the mem memories come from challenges and fights and wins and losses and ridiculous moments. Right. People, when people keep talking, how can we rekindle the flame? I tell them, do you expect the flame to come when you're seated there? You must be cooking something, the flame. <laughs> Please put a pot on the, <laughs> trying to cook something. Right. So I asked them, what is important for both of you? Okay. Oh, we wanted to move to a better house. Very good. We wanted to acquire, we wanted to take our, t tell our, take our children all over the world for better universities. Very good. Okay. Now save towards that. Acquire insurance policies. Do that. Stretch each other. It is that that, that rekindles the flame. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm excited for the rest of this conversation. When we come back from this break, we're actually going to be doing eight tests to spot cracks in your relationship or in your marriage. OK, and uh, you want to stay tuned for that, perhaps even follow along and assess yourself as well as we go through these here on the show. Double two triple nine is the SMS line and we'll be back after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with Benjamin Zulu. Shout out to everybody who's watching the show today, including uh, my director's wife, Anaitwa Shiwa Dan. Naskeli kwa na faa toke, lakini ya meona this conversation is happening. Amekalea pale kwa nyumba, mishikilia remote, hameongeza volume. Wow. Eh. Hey. <laughs> watu, watu leo watapatikana. <laughs> But anyway, Benjamin, we're continuing to talk about how to spot and fill the cracks in our relationships and mm -hmm. in our marriages. And actually, we're talking about relationships and marriages. And I'm just curious, is there sort of any sort of different assessment or are we more vulnerable to cracks in the relationship, like before marriage or after marriage? And how is there any sort of difference between the two as to what maybe contributes to the cracks and how they form? The happy thing with the relationship is we are in assessment phase. Mm -hmm. There's no commitment, there's no contract. All the way until you put the ring, you are free to change your mind should you see serious problems. Right. But once you are inside the marriage now, you have, you have already jumped. You have already jumped from the airplane, you are in the air, you're already committed. <laughs> It's now to manage <laughs> to your parachute <laughs> out the landing, right. no negotiating about going back. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, uh, with marriage, I tell people that marriage is like a bicycle. It's only stable when it's moving. Okay. When you stop moving, it will fall. So the difference between a relationship is that it's an interview. Marriage is the commitment. All right. We are already inside. Okay. Yeah. So you better make sure you're good to go before you put on that ring. You know, I, I, I tell people that if you develop doubts, push forward the wedding. <laughs> if you develop doubts, better to cancel 20 engagements than one right. marriage. Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me start going through then these eight tests that we want to right. kind of assess ourselves with here this morning. And um, these are to help us kind of spot cracks in our relationships and in our marriages. So the first test is... I've got news. 
test when something happens during Kuna the day kitu nataka kukwambia who do you think of telling first it used to be your lover it used to be your partner now if it's another person who comes to mind even if it's your girlfriend <laughs> even if it's your boyfriend even if it's a, a person of the same gender we are saying is your partner still the first person to share good news with mm. that is a, a sign of a crack if yes tick if no a crack is developing is it only good news or bad news too something Any that news. is important both a disappointment or an excitement whichever way who do you think of telling first it should be your partner Absolutely. and when you when you go out there talking with other people you come to them when you have already run Wound your last minute you even mentioned it in passing by the way yeah, that thing went through what i was caught for the interview so are you not exact because you have already shared with someone else yeah. that's a crack hey okay <laughs> okay uh, the second one is the free time test you finally get a free weekend yes your partner is free as well you know you need time together but you're not sure you'd prefer to spend if the you time deliberately uh, take your free time elsewhere you start doing other things instead of spending that uh, free time with, uh, with your person. And you know people keep being drummed. There's a lot of sermons being preached about great quality time. Great. I tell you, that's empty hot air. If you do not just simply take advantage of all opportunities and create themselves. Okay. It's hard yes, to yes, budget. Yes. On that day from 2.15 to 3.45, <laughs> we have quality time. That's one hour, that 10 minutes. <laughs> Come sit here. Now we have quality time. You <laughs> cannot force quality time that way. You can simply look for all relaxed moments, catch up with each other. Yeah. Make it natural. It cannot be too structured, too forced. You yeah. know the way people do co-parenting and it's very weird. The child is supposed to spend 15 minutes on one parent. They arrive here 15 in. Pass it. There. Okay. 15, uh, so uh, hey, how, uh, all right, we are all time. <laughs> it will never be quality time. Mm. It's supposed to be spontaneous and natural. So when you have a free moment, even if there's tension between the two of you, look for a way to spend the time together okay what about the we don't talk anymore test now you ask your partner a decent question but beyond what you would normally cover and see what comes up this go back to you and you follow up on it that test is talking about do we are we personal anymore or we only talk surface matters uh, just the normal day-to-day -day things around the kids, around other things, other parties. <laughs> you know, you know, this child is oh, oh, tomorrow is na, 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 mm -hmm. routine. No, we are saying, do you talk personal things? Once you realize it's like that personal place is drying up, replenish it by opening up yourself. Right. The reason we close in it because you hurt me last time. I don't want to hurt me again. <laughs> so now I open a little bit to see, and you open a little bit. You're supposed to always initiate that. And if both of you offended each other lastly, uh, you are angry i'm angry i hurt you you hurt me you started i'll use that oh come down we said in the battle of egos the first one to surrender is the winner mm. in the battle of egos the one first one to surrender is the winner mm. so break the eyes by opening up by the way i was thinking about something i was feeling worried like, no, 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 no. open be vulnerable so that i can come now and also be vulnerable back right right and i also want to just put in a caveat here as we're calling these tests you know because there are those people who feel like you literally need to be testing your relationship and your partner uh, that's not what we're talking about here. We're just using these as sort of measuring sticks. This is not to say, go and gee, set up a trap or something to seek out your partner. Just, let's and let's warn those not. people who prank or, or carry out those and, uh, and dis indecent. Life is, already, life is already full of troubles. You don't need to manufacture them. Especially from the ones you love. Thank you. If you want to know whether your partner is committed, just sit and watch. Life will bring enough tests. Right. No need to generate them. Yeah. Someone told me, I said uh, uh, my girlfriend to tell that guy that I was dating another person. Now he is so offended. I told oh, no. what kind of prank is that? Yeah. How will he ever know that it's, it's even very offensive? Yeah. You're supposed to simply let live. Live will bring enough tests. Okay. Yeah. So caveat there for all of you. Um, let's go to the next one, which was the what was that again test? Everyone gets distracted from time to time. But if it's a repeat pattern. It gets boring and it's dangerous for your relationship. It's like when every time we're on our guy, it just comes in here and it leaves through the other ear. If they're always distracted, you feel unheard. And when you feel unheard, ladies usually turn their attention to the child mm -hmm. or to the house help. The guy turns attention to the football, <laughs> to the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you realize that I don't hear you repeatedly, I've been asking, sorry, I missed that, sorry, I missed that. You should raise it up. I notice that you, you, what I'm saying is part, passing you frequently. Are you okay? You know, bring it up. Don't, don't don't imagine that I'm ignoring you on purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Twenty kwa easy. If we do daily. 
phones, our cell phones, because they're <laughs> some people sad to say it seems that their phones are much more interesting than their than their partner, and they're just constantly on their devices a good caveat here once you realize that person is more interested on their phone than in you that is a problem and especially if you started dating online dating online has a very illusion that this it person does. is very attentive because yeah. you're doing video calls they are always on but you realize when you're talking you're using the phone you need to meet them i told people don't date online meet hook up online but date offline okay. to see their behavior around the phone when you are talking through online is the phone you're using to talk and you can't know whether they're always distracted in their phone yeah. or they always pay you attention because they are full there on the screen you think that's how attentive they are. You only need to come and realize in real life they are very distracted. Perpetually, <laughs> they are on the phone still. When you were when you were on the phone, they were on you. Now that you're not on the phone, they are on the phone. Mm. <laughs> so you need to you need to confirm whether the person is distracted. Now, if you're already married, and or um, the habit is coming up when you're already married, mm. you need to bring it up until and um, uh, there are people who decide no phone moments. The yeah. people deliberately you don't we are not legislating here we are saying look for a way to concentrate on each other and mm -hmm. distracted perpetually by phones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in fact i hear a lot of um married couples like when they first get married I've, i have friends who decided the first day of their marriage there was no tv in the house look at that can you imagine because they were like we're going to build this bar attacking the wife doesn't want to hear stories as g football the husband doesn't want to hear stories as soap opera so <laughs> they actually made a pact that they would not have any tv in their house and, and you've noticed that year. actually if you if you if you flow with the news you may be stressed throughout because you have so much corona to report you have so much uh, uh, outbreaks to report many things to they are important to keep us updated but you also need to focus on each other so it may be radical to remove the tv <laughs> but we are saying do whatever it takes the both of you mm. as long as is mutual remember a couple is a sovereign unit mm -hmm. <laughs> what you do is for the two of you mm -hmm. so choose whatever works for you okay there's also people though in our next test if you find yourself just constantly fighting over very little insignificant things especially ma majoring on the minor arguing over things that you have, you'll have to apologize later and realize it was actually trivial Mm -hmm. If you repeatedly have to apologize for what you raised up last time, it means there's a pattern of being petty and picky. And you know why people become petty and picky? It's because um, their connection has, has become so weak that small issues cannot be overlooked now. Remember when you're doing well, you overlook a lot of things. Mm -hmm. When both of you are doing, when you trust each other, when you know this person means well, when you're working, and I said, keep projects in view. Mm -hmm. Project focus your energy on the right things. You don't have time to remember that I did not I called you 10 or 5 and not 10 exactly. I called you 11:45 instead of 11:42. You not remember petty things if you are if you had gone to one side to work on a project, you are going to check on work, you are going to check on this working on the other working. When we are talking around ourselves and what we are working on, petty things will follow the background. Mm -hmm. So if you realize there's a lot of pettiness and having to apologize because there's a lot of idleness among the two of you and you are gazing at each other. Love is not gazing at each other. It's looking together in the same direction. Mm -hmm. Love involves movement. It it's a dance. It's not an embrace. It's a dance moving towards a certain <laughs> direction. Not just yeah. embrace and I'm not listening. Oh, you, <laughs> you know, no, no, no. don't lose the grip. I, yeah, you know, yeah, don't yeah. try to. And we say it: if if you love a person, don't possess them. Yeah. Love is about appreciation, not possession. If you love a flower, then you pluck it. It will stop being what you loved. Mm. Instead, nourish it where it is. So still maintain freedom between each other. You're dancing to the same rhythm, and you are moving at the same direction. Marriage only be, remains fl uh, flamboyant, uh, you know, it has flavor only when we are doing something together, not right. when we are gazing at each other. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that means actually we should be willing to embrace struggles in our relationship. Yes. Which is so opposite of what society tells us because they say, oh, you know, when people talk about compatibility, and I want you to touch on this, because they sort of assume that compatibility means like you just see everything together all the time and all the time you're always, like I already know what their answer is going to be, you know, they'll always, you know, just go along with whatever I'm saying. But that kind of removes the space for struggle and for that dance to you, happen. You, you see, I, I like something you said today. You said you like the way I put on and you buy you but you got ideas for somebody look at that you are strong where he is not 
she is strong where I am not. Mm -hmm. if, 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 if before she came, I was always like this, you would ask me what difference she brought. Mm. <laughs> so one area we are not the same is because she's strong in aesthetics. and She just dreams about it. You find us searching about it every time. Mm -hmm. Look at how alert you are yourself to ideas. Oh, that's a good idea. I think mm -hmm. I can try that on him. I think I can because you are he is not thinking about I can assure you he's not thinking about that. Yeah, I know he's not. <laughs> he's definitely not going to pick up a floor. Me and him, we share a lot in common. <laughs> we don't fantasize dressing. <laughs> We think about bigger things. <laughs> <laughs> so, compatibility Sorry. means you are strong where I'm not. And your strength complements mine. And I want to ask men to allow their women to dress them, please. <laughs> there are men who dress so quiet. One teacher used to dress <laughs> the same dressing every Tuesday. Every oh, yeah. Tuesday, every Wednesday, we could mark because he was teaching us. On the, <laughs> but he was up here the same. When the wife showed up in a joking way, we said, this guy likes this shirt. You know, he never allows me to dress him. <laughs> so, men, let's allow our women to do their part. Okay. It's not always that the woman is fine. Are there. Some men are fine even in cooking mm -hmm. than the wife. is not mm -hmm. always. But we are saying, generally, where, where she is strong, allow her to do it. Where he is strong, allow him to do it. It's for your benefit. It's, it's, we are a team now. We're not competitors. Exactly. We are a team now. So, compatibility means we can bring our strengths together to form a stronger team yeah to form a stronger team if you if i know you love things to do with the uh, food and cereals you're just better at them i can allow you to advise there mm -hmm. take leadership there on the other side i'll take leadership many men are better drivers than their wives mm -hmm. <laughs> so when they're moving somewhere the, either you will drive himself or you'll be correcting the wife perpetually mm -hmm. don't drive this way don't drive this way don't drive this way so i i ask guys either try your way to ignore and let her just drive okay <laughs> or let her drive alone <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, there's another sort of test here, uh, quote unquote, for those who then really try and restrict themselves from arguing in front of their children. But as soon as wamefunga mlango, hell breaks loose. Hell breaks loose. <laughs> we want to tell people, yes, it's okay not to argue in front of children because it's very scarring for them. There are those people who shout on top of each other's voice when children are there or throw things. Mm -hmm. That's very traumatizing for the child. The child depends on the stability of the home to, to, to survive, to know that the world is safe. But if there's chaos at home, they feel vulnerable to everything. So it's true you should argue away from children. But I want to ask you not to postpone uh, differences. There are people, they don't handle it in front of child, but they also refuse to handle it away from the children. Mm -hmm. Do not sweep differences under the carpet to perpetually because when, you, when they build, the way they build up, they will blow up. Mm. There's no need to bottle up things that you cannot even communicate. The, the, I, I tell people that you can survive without arguing. Just when you tell couples that you don't need to argue. Yeah. People make arguing so normal. As if, do you know when you're arguing, you can, you're likely to say something foolish. You're not in control. You're emotionally okay. worked up. You'll have more things to apologize about. And you're not listening to me. You only listen to what you can answer. Mm. So when you realize that you're getting emotionally worked up, one of you, the mature one, should go down. And mm -hmm. I always tell men, because we are given more rational, men have a strong ability to differentiate rational and emotions. Okay. And I ask, always ask them to be the first ones to back down. Okay. Don't raise your voice, man. Just improve your argument. It's the rain that grows the flowers, not thunder. Yeah. So wait for Kodivine time and listen to what she was saying. Yeah, okay, you are saying this. I thought that's how it's different. It's better even to chat WhatsApp. Okay. And I ask couples to always have a WhatsApp group where you are alone. To, to structure your messages before you send them <laughs> so that you can reread them and let them cool down. Absolutely. Please don't send 20 pages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin, my time is going so fast and there's a bunch of SMSs here that I'm just going to try and summarize for you All right. um, to address, okay? Even yeah. as you give your final comments then on how to actually fix and uh, solve these cracks. Um, there's a lot of people here talking about how they're in relationships. They've started projects together. I have several like these. Either the husband or the wife decides that um, either the wife is just going to continue paying them by themselves. Ama nyumba ikikamiliko anasema, it is my house. <laughs> if you don't like it, leave. And yet you've been struggling together to do, to build the actual house or whatever the project this? was. Don't do projects when you're dating, please. Yes. You're putting the car in front of them. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. You do projects inside marriage. So, so those are inside marriage inside. and you did the project and the person swindled you or short changed you. Mm -hmm. You need also to safeguard. Know your person. If you know they are a little bit materialistic, make sure the title is written in, front, uh, in your both names or right. in names of your children. Yeah. So secure some interest depending on how you know your person. Okay. Yeah. 
a lot of other people asking about if your partner then stops valuing your points or they don't listen to what you say. Another says they don't take my opinions. Um, uh, or there's someone here who at your husband who packs his belongings like clothes and title deeds. Ay. <laughs> When you differ and leaves to an unknown destination. Akianani. <laughs> That's <laughs> telenovela. And we <laughs> some people look, some things look like ogre movies and they happen <laughs> they happen in relationships. Yeah. That's a very fragile relationship. And I would want to take his history and to have a conversation with that man. Wait when there is no conflict now. Ask him what he wants for mm. this relationship. Okay. Yeah. So to the ones who are saying the person never talks to me, never listens to me, is that a crack in their relationship? It's a serious crack and you want to wait when there's no tension and bring up that conversation. Okay. Okay. And state that you cannot put up with that anymore. Yeah. Especially bring it up when there's no difference. Okay. So as we wrap this up then, the solution one number one is to actually communicate, to yes. talk. Don't allow things to simmer until your crack becomes a huge now. It's a proper break. That's right. Right. And then what else would you suggest? I would also suggest that uh, anticipate uh, those things before they start. Mm. Sometimes you can see a crack evolving, yeah. even before it becomes visible. So anticipate right. them and converse about them. Fantastic. Benjamin, thank you for coming as always. And uh, your handles? Benjamin Zulu KE, Facebook page Benjamin Zulu KE, email Benjamin Zulu KE at Gmail. Everywhere else, Benjamin Zulu KE. Excellent. Gotea Mrembo. <laughs> <laughs> and with that said guys we're going to take a break now as we get ready for our next segment like i did promise we're going to be touching on skincare and facial mapping okay so give us a moment to just get ourselves set up right here in the meantime you can keep sending in your messages to double two triple nine and we'll see you after this <laughs>